A new breed of cats is presented by the National Bank of Detroit. Ain't no more pussy cat. It's lying. You gotta straighten that off. Matthew Stafford. Touchdown, Detroit Lions! What's Calvin? Got it! Sanders breaks the tackle! Touchdown, Lions! Lost out of the backfield. There's Johnson. Oh, shucks in the side. That's Darius' big play slay. Obviously excited to get going on uh, Arizona um, for us to get out and practice and really kind of dive into this and take a look at it. Um, very difficult uh, challenge in front of us here. Uh, Cliff on the offensive side of the ball doing a great job. Uh, new quarterback, very talented player. They have a lot of real new skill players that are outstanding. Tight end position was redone. Uh, their offensive line, you know, they think they've really done a good job of building that up. So offensively, we've got a big challenge in front of us. Defensively, Vance Joseph on that side of the ball, uh, kind of converting that back into the 3-4 kind of look, uh, if you will, with a uh, kind of a four-down defensive line principle standpoint, penetrating defense, one gap, uh, kind of attack you vertically, um, create negative plays, attack the ball, and put a complement of uh, pressures, both out of base and out of sub. So I do a good job with that. And then, um, you know, obviously special teams, Jeff Rogers has been there for a while, was at Chicago before that really outstanding special teams coach. They have aggressive players on their special teams. Uh, they call it aggressively. They do a great job with their coverage units, and, and they're very explosive in the return units with the skill players they have. So it's kind of all three phases here that we have to deal with this weekend that are going to be uh, really important for us to execute at a high level as we you know look towards the game. So it uh, should be a good work day for us. You know We'll grind through it here today and stay on track and then just keep going through the course of the week before we travel on Friday. Uh, that offense obviously being new and with Kyler, but defensively with Jones and Suggs on the edge, just what kind of problems did those guys, obviously veteran guys, have done yeah. a long time this week? What did they uh, you know, offer them? Yeah, I think um, you know what they do really from that standpoint is they um, you know they they collapse the width of the pocket. You know, both of those guys have an extremely um, you know high level skill set in the passing game. They also play the run very well too. Um, you know, Suggs with his power, his ability to hold the edge Chandler with his length, you know, he does a good job of holding the edge. Uh, and then when they transition into the pass rush, um, you know, Suggs speed off the edge, his ability to turn the corner, speed to power pass rush, the ability to come underneath and counter, um, very aggressive pass rusher. And then, you know, Chandler has a, you know, full arsenal of weapons that he uses on the edge. He can kind of line up everywhere uh, from that standpoint. So we have to be ready for both of those guys to be in, um, you know, uh, different positions across the line of scrimmage to be able to handle them. It's, it's, Real difficult task when you have two edge guys like that coming at you from a, um, a protection standpoint. In your side, the defensive leader, how di difficult is it to defend a guy like Kyler Murray? Unscripted plays where he get out there in the open field and, and use his natural ability. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really difficult. You know, a guy like um, like Kyler with his ability and his speed and athleticism, um, and I would say really just his quick decision making. 
uh, you know, once he kind of makes that decision, the ball's either out or he's trying to extend the play and or he's got it tucked and he's running. Uh, one of the things when you watch him run that's really impressive is, uh, you know, the way that he sets up the blocks in front of him. He does an outstanding job of kind of attacking the angles of the tacklers, uh, whether it's the guys in the secondary or the, or the, uh, the linebackers, when those angles, those approach angles that they're coming at. He can freeze those guys. He'll get them to cross over. He'll get them to flatten out. And then he's got this uh, amazing ability to dip in, dip back out at top speed and get outside to the edge. And at that point, you know, a lot of the pursuit gets collapsed inside. The receivers do a good job of covering those guys up on the outside from outside in. And then he gets to the sideline and he's gone. So it's, it's really uh, his running skill set and the way that he attacks the defenders as they're approaching him to tackle him it's um you know it's just it's like a running back it's a high level and just to be clear about something that you said at the jump you're leaving you guys are leaving friday you said saturday i guess what, yeah we're why, traveling out yep yeah why choose to do that uh, same thing we did last year going out to arizona it was kind of we like the um you know the approach to it to get out there and get settled in which allows us to we have a little bit of extra time this week you know as it being the first game of the season so um just thought it'd be it was a good approach last year we're going to stay with that does the heat have anything to do with that too? Because it's going to be theoretically over 100 there. Not really. Not from a standpoint of us getting acclimated or anything like that. I mean, it's just um, you know we're not going to be uh, doing any extensive practicing or anything like that in it. So it's more just a travel thing. On um, Murray, broken plays, uh, zone read, maybe maybe even some some RPOs. I mean, how important is the fundamental base you've been building throughout training camp and, and making sure that. I guess the eyes and the muscle memory is trained to really keep him contained. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, from that standpoint, it's definitely fundamentals uh, just in general because of the unknown of what the plays are going to be. So we're going to have to rely on those fundamental techniques in order for us to stop what they're doing uh, once we get into the game and kind of figure it out. We've seen, obviously, you know, the tape of what they've done preseason-wise. We've seen the Texas Tech tape. Um, we know the offenses. There's different things that, um, you know, they can do out of those offenses, combine it with the quarterback run game that they have so whatever that is and it declares we're not obviously going to be able to uh, have enough time to you know uh, work on and master all of it but we have to be able to go back to that foundation and that foundation is going to be playing with good fundamental technique and that's where you start and then uh, you know you get into your run fits from there so it's certainly uh, critically important for us to make sure that we're doing a great job up front of of you know uh, trying to control the line of scrimmage and trying to make sure that the run game is handled from that standpoint and we get into the game making adjustments you know that'll be the biggest thing for us once we see it from that perspective touched on it a little bit there but obviously there's another guy in that backfield that you have to worry about quite a bit and david johnson yeah. just how much does his versatility paired with what kyler can do really challenge what you're going to have to be able to counter with yeah i mean i think um absolutely you know he's a, he's a great player for him you know i think it's something that he's being overshadowed a little bit right now his ability to run the ball um it's kind of the you know, the threat with the quarterback read option play, obviously the main portion of that is the regular run play that goes along with it. And, you know, from that standpoint, whether it's David, John, uh, David Johnson or Edmonds, it doesn't really matter. They're both outstanding backs. They have a great jump cut ability. So some of those schemes where you're kind of, you know, running with the offensive line and creating those seams and those gaps, they take a tremendous advantage of that on the cutback plays. They're able to kind of get all the way to the backside or take it out front side because of their speed and their burst ability. And once those guys get into the second level, it, it becomes a big problem from a tackling standpoint. So um, that's the number one threat with the run game is those guys first and foremost. And then obviously with the, you know, both of them, Johnson, obviously the ability to get out of the backfield and catch the ball um, begins another whole threat in the passing game, whether he's going vertical out of the backfield, which they like to do in the fringe in the high red area, or in the empty sets where they're just going to move him out of the backfield and put him out into space and try to take advantage of a matchup. Those are, those are big issues for us. Uh, some of your players and coaches have talked about is just how intelligent C.J. Anderson is. Can you just speak to, and I think you even sort of alluded to it, just talking ball from how much you enjoyed that when you came in. Yeah. Um, can you speak to how high his football IQ is, A, and then B, how that helps the other running backs, how, you know, what, what sort of asset he can be to you. Sure. That's um, I think he's done a great job through the course of his career of really kind of cataloging um, a lot of the different schemes that he's been in along with, along with a lot of the different defenses that he's seen. And those are the conversations that are probably the most uh, fun or, you know, kind of exciting, like, hey, you know, we saw this, you did this, or, hey, this guy was running this, and this is how we attacked it or handled it. It kind of just gives it a whole different approach uh, when you're talking to a player like that that understands the concepts and then also the ties of who's behind those concepts and why, um, you know, they saw them, you know, for what particular reasons. And then you try to bring those uh, conversations back into the current moment as far as what we're going to see or what we might see week in, week out. And, you know, what that does is really just tries to give a value of experience to maybe the players that don't have the same kind of experience. You know, 
certainly from that standpoint, uh, the game moves very quick and the more the history of it or just kind of the um, cataloging of the different things that you've seen, if you can get that across to the players that maybe haven't seen as many reps or as many looks, um, I think it just gives those guys an edge. So uh, it's been great, you know, from those conversations, um, just being able to talk, you know, football in those terms of the strategy behind it and why that's really kind of the biggest thing. He called plays in the other game, in the game the other day. Uh, maybe you can address why he didn't let him, but do you think he could be a coach one day? Is that something that maybe? Um, good question. I didn't know about the, the tweets uh, or, or calling plays, so I was probably behind the Gatorade buckets then. So um, I think CJ can do whatever he wants to do. I think he's, you know, he's got a great football mind, and he enjoys it, and he loves it. And I think as long as you're passionate about whatever it is you want to do, uh, you know, you'll find a way. You've mentioned, I think, both yesterday and today, just the importance of adjustments in this game. Um, given the unknowns and um, I guess some of the, the variations they're going to throw you, is, is this a game that's um, maybe more so on the coaching staff to uh, correct as, as things are going along? I don't know if um, it's certainly a big part of it. You know, coaching has always got to be number one. You know, we got to do a great job of coaching, and that's the bottom line. Um, but I, I do agree with what you had mentioned earlier, we were talking about is just fundamentals. Those got to be on point too. Those are, it's really important. So I think just collectively, those two things, um, the coaching part of it, the understanding, the concepts, the learning, being able to adjust within the game, getting good information during the game, some of that stuff goes at a high pace. Sometimes the looks are a little bit different uh, and trying to decipher what's going on is going to be critically important. And then just being able to execute, you know, that's going to be the number one thing, execute out on the field and uh, start with good fundamentals and go from there. You mentioned uh, the special teams too, the challenge from there. Um, yeah. I'm sure Charles Washington was a tough cut for you guys, just how much emphasis you put on that side of things. Uh, when a player moves like that, like we always assume that there's some things that have to change just so they don't take too much information over the other team, but like how much adjustment do you have to make when a guy leaves this close to a game? Yeah, it's a great question uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, you know, I think for us, this game, it's, it's, it's never about one player. You know, it's got to be a complete game. So whether it's offense, defense, or special teams, it's going to be everybody on the field working together and really being so early in the season and obviously the first game of the season, it's going to be about just 11 guys being on the same page, especially in special teams where speed and space is such a, uh, a big issue for us. I mean, uh, Chuck's a great player, so certainly he's going to be someone that we're going to have to you know, deal with and contend with and, um, you know, and just make sure that we know where he's lined up from those situations. But it's got to be everybody working together from that standpoint in order to have success on the play. Um, you know, it's not just kind of one guy that makes any sense, especially in special teams. Those are you know, just... Uh, Tremendously difficult plays, the speed, the execution, um, you know, the timing, all of it has to go into it. And again, um, you know, there's only so many live reps that we got during preseason. We tried to get as many as we could, but especially with the group that's out there um, all at one time, this is kind of, you know, will be unique from that standpoint of all these guys out there together in those particular plays trying to gel that unit. Um, it takes a little bit of time. Yeah, what do you think about the opener? Are they all the same, or is there a different sort of feel from year to year at different opening games starting the season? Um, I enjoy all of them, man. They're fun. Uh, it's obviously an exciting time for all of us. You know, we've worked, uh, you know, a really long off season to get to this point, and uh, everybody's excited to go out there and play. I know we are as a team, um, and I know you know we got a bunch of young guys that'll be playing out there for the first time, which is always fun to see those guys do that as well. Do any of your um, previous openers stand out to you? Besides last year? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. No, you know, it was cool. We played, 2011 played on September 11th, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, cool cool game to be a part of. Um, my rookie year, went to New Orleans. They put on a show. Yeah. Um, I remember most of them usually, I think. Tampa was a good one. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you remember about that first game? I mean, Kyler's going to be in a similar situation when you were rookie coach, rookie quarterback. Um, it's a, uh, you know, it's an exciting time. You work hard, you work your whole life to get to that point, and, uh, you know, it finally comes true for you, so it's, it's a fun, fun thing to be a part of. Um, you know, he's a, he's a really talented player, um, you know, an exciting guy to watch, so, uh, you know, just happy for him. Matthew, yeah, we've seen this before, we've thought, gone through this before, we wanted to see the offense under a new coordinator, like a Lombardi and Jim Bob. What about you? Are you interested to see how this all fits together with Bevel? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously we've been working extremely hard. Um, you know, he's trying to get to know our players and, and myself as, as much as he can. I'm trying to get to know him and, and uh, his system as best I can and, and trying to make that thing gel as quickly as possible. Um, you know, it's always a work in progress, whether it's year one, day one, or year ten. It um, doesn't matter. Um, we're always trying to be better, find ways to be better. 
Um, but it's it's an exciting thing to get out there and, and uh, go play ball. Is there still an element of the unknown just because now you know you're going to get schemed against and you know, things like that heading into live action? Yeah, I mean I think uh, you know you got to prove yourself every you know every week in this league. Um, you know they're going to be scheming us, we'll be scheming them. It's the way it goes in the NFL week to week. You go out there and, and uh, try and put you know our players in the best possible position to succeed, and it's on us to go out there and execute. On, on paper, it looks like their secondary has some holes in it. What do you see when you see their, their defense on film or the guys that are out there? Um, you know, Tremaine Brock's played for a long time in this league. Um, he's an experienced player, smart guy. Um, you know, both their safeties have played a decent amount of football, good players. Um, 33, the young kids, a really talented kid, uh, you know, a high-round draft pick. Um, 25 was here last year, um, so a little bit of familiarity with him. But uh, these guys are on NFL rosters for a reason. You know, they're talented guys. They they do certain things really well. Um, it's on us to go out there and, and make sure that, you know, our guys are, are competing at a high level and, and trying to put points on the board. Hey, Matthew, there were rumblings about your health. If they were true or false, how do you feel overall? I feel great. I feel good. Do you like where the offense is at heading into to week one and after the month of camp? Yeah, you know, I think um, always room to grow, always room to improve. Um, I think our communication is good. Um, you know, we'll be tested on the road against a good football team, a defense that's really talented. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm excited for us to go out there and, and play some games and, uh, you know, obviously learn, uh, you know, from mistakes that are going to happen in the game and, and also build on some positives. Matt, you've had some big years with, with tight ends being prominent players. Go back to Pettigrew and Shuffler, you know, different players, you know. But what does this, this group add to you? This, this, it's a whole new set of guys. Yeah, a lot of versatility. Yeah. You know, I think all the guys can do a little bit of everything, yeah. um, which is, is fun to have as a quarterback. Um, all of them are big physical guys. All of them move really well. Uh, catch the ball really well, so uh, you know, hold up in the run game and the pass game, blocking wise. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited and, and happy to have those guys that have been working yeah, really hard. Just, what about just the catch radius? You talk about guys who are six six, six seven. Yeah, six, I mean all of them. All yeah. of them are, are big, tall players that uh, you know move well, catch the ball well. You know, kind of in all spots. We haven't talked to you since Andrew Luck retired. Just when you see that happen, you also taking a lot of hits in your career. Does your thought process change at all? Like, when, what do you think of when he does that? Uh, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't change, you know, my thought process. I think everybody's in their own different situation. You know, everybody's their own human being. Uh, you know, I respect the hell out of Andrew. He's a great player in this league, uh, a warrior out on the football field, a great player when he was healthy and, and uh, you know, rolling. Um, I'm happy for him if he's happy. You know, if that's what makes him happy, man, I'm. I'm really happy for him, uh, you know, and I, and I wish him nothing but the best. Have there been times where you've thought about any of that stuff? No. Does it feel like you're 11? <laughs> Some days. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, Time flies, doesn't it? No, it does. It really does. Um, yeah, a lot of memories, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of games played, a lot of snaps, uh, you know, that I can remember. and. and uh, you know, all of it's good experience and, and use it to, to my advantage as much as, you know, as, much as I possibly can. But, uh, yeah, I, every year I'm, I'm always still extremely excited to get out there and go play. Um, you know, we work all year for, you know, 16 opportunities that are guaranteed to us, um, you know, to go out there and play. Uh, you know, and, it's, you know, kicking the first one off is a whole lot of fun. After 10 years, though, is it a little bit different? I mean, there's not probably a bunch of defense can throw at you that you haven't seen already. Is that part of the change? Um, a little bit, maybe. Um, for sure, from year one to year now, or year one to year 11, uh, yeah, no doubt. But, uh, you know, every year I'm trying to be, you know, a better player than I was the year before. Um, this year's no different. So, uh, you know, obviously I put added pressure on myself just to go, you know, play better and, and uh, you know, help this team win. Is there anything that really surprises you in the game anymore? They just go, whoa, just you know, knocks it dead that you see. Um, Either on or off the field, you know, yeah. just the whole thing of the league. Oh, man, yeah, I mean, there's still stuff that, uh, you know, surprises me. Um, you know, these guys are getting younger every year in this locker room, and that, what they do <laughs> <laughs> on and off the field surprises me sometimes. Uh, but uh, no, I enjoy him? it. No, I, I enjoy it, man. It's, uh, it's a really fun part of, you know, being around for as long as I've been around. Yeah. Um, you know, seeing the locker rooms change and, and uh, getting to know those you know, getting to know a bunch of different guys. It's a lot of fun. Does that make you feel old in some ways? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but uh, I, I feel, I feel fine. I feel good.
I mean, how different is Patricia from what he was dealing with going into last year's opener compared to going into this year's opener? Has he matured? Has he changed? What uh, say? No, I think we, as players in the offseason, do everything we can to come back and be better football players. Our coaches, you know, spend time on themselves and, hey, how can I be a better coach? Uh, and... You know, Coach Patricia is no different. I think uh, he's done an outstanding job leading this team this offseason and, and into this season. Um, we know exactly what he wants day in and day out. He knows us better just from being around us and, you know, experience with us. Um, so it's been it's been great. You talked about the young guys. How much should they come to you just to figure things out? They may not even be plays, but just the yeah, life no, in Yeah, no, I'm trying to help them out as much as I possibly yeah. can. Um, you know, there's, there's things within the game that I can for sure help them with or at least – you know, give them my thought, my yeah. advice. Um, you know, that's, you know, in the play, in the game, but also walking around the locker room, where to live out here, all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's just a million questions that uh, Mule and I get um, <laughs> being the tenured guys around here uh, that we try to help them out as much as we possibly can. What city do you say? Oh, I don't I, – uh, I've got no, no preference there. I just <laughs> – Ask them what they want to do. And then a real estate license. Right <laughs> my agent called me um, while I was Detroit claiming, so I had to pack up. Told my girlfriend, you know, help me pack up. <laughs> I gotta go. It was crazy because she's still there packing up now. So, but <laughs> flew out here, man, and was trying to get used to it fast. Ever been to Detroit before? First, first time. First time. Yeah. Do you know much about the the offense? I mean, I know you have a oh, yeah, connection yeah. with Bevel. Absolutely. Um, I know the offense pretty good. Um, just watching those guys today, um, watching Stafford give a signal and it was it clicked right away. You know, so I'm like, okay, that's that. You know, and meeting with the running back coach and um, Kyle, he 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 knew that I knew a lot. Um, at the same time, it's really good to go into a situation where you already been before. You know, so. Nothing is really new to me. I'm sure Bevel got a couple wrinkles that, you know, that I have to learn. But right now, it's it's going to be a challenge. But it's not a major. You know, it's not hard at all. I know your head's probably spinning with with so many things going on. But your early impressions of, of the rest of the running backs in this uh, locker room? Well, um, CJ is a leader. Um, he's a good leader. Um, um, Ty Ty's a special guy. Um, <laughs> Justin, um, <laughs> he's a hell of a player as well. Um, and we got a pretty good fullback. Um, but those guys, they can do great things, you know, in the running back room. And I'm happy to be a part of it, you know, to be here with them. Um, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to playing with them and making plays with them. Great, thanks, guys. They let the flowers under our feet Chase us into the hills, oh They let the walls off of the leash Should've finished the kill We got ashes on our shoes And an outcast attitude And we're all immune Cause we know the truth is viral
Yeah, we might be the outsiders, but the in crowd is so out of right now. No bones, no drama. We live how we wanna. Yeah, we might be. 